Out of the three theme parks I managed to visit while I was in Sweden, the last of which was Liseberg in Gothenburg, Sweden. And much like Grönland, Liseberg is in the heart of downtown. There are huge, tall buildings surrounding the place. You can look out from the top of the park and see houses, shops, streets, the main highway. The park is completely boxed in, so like Grönland, it makes it a little bit trickier for this park to expand because they are limited on space. But it is a very neat place. I'm so glad I had a chance to visit here. It was definitely a favorite of mine in Europe. One of the things that makes Liseberg unique is this weird contrast between one side of the park from the other. Because when you enter and walk down the main midway and most of the park, you're looking around and you're like, wow, this is pretty flat. And then you go up to the area by Helix and it is this massive hill. So big that in order to get there, you have to take two escalators. Not one, but two. It gives you this incredible view of the rest of the park. It is crazy, I did not realize that the park was almost divided based on whether it's on flat ground or it's on a hill. So much so that when I first walked in, I'm like, all right, gotta go straight for Helix. I couldn't find the entrance because all I see is an escalator. I didn't know that that's where you had to go in order to get to the entrance. So I'm seeing Helix all up there and I'm like, well, how do I get there? And actually it is a little deceiving because above the entrance to the escalator, later it says atmosphere which is the drop tower and the sign for helix is right below it so if you're not paying attention it is a little bit easy to miss so if you're going here for the first time there are multiple attractions at the top of this hill in order to get there you have to go up the escalators and the park is very smart they decided to use this hill to their advantage Many of the rides up there use this hill and terrain in the layout. The obvious example is Helix, but even their Schwarzkopf coaster, Liesbergbahnen, hopefully I pronounced that right, spends much of the layout going around these big wide turns, and they drastically vary in size depending on how it's using the land. So for a lot of it, it starts up high, drops down low, and then swings back up. They wouldn't have been able to do that on flat ground. They also have an SNS Scream and Swing, and much like a lot of parks, they decided to put this one on the edge of the cliff, so when you ride it, you swing out and you're looking down to the ground. Very cool. One thing I was impressed with is this park has multiple large-scale flat rides. I mentioned the Scream and Swing. They also have an Intamin Gyro Swing. That's called Loki. You can find that near Valkyria, which I'm going to talk about Valkyria a little bit later. You can also find a Gerslauer Sky Roller. Those are great. Of course, the park has a Log Flume, Zamperla Disco, and a lot of true classics such as your swings. So overall, the ride collection here is good. In terms of roller coasters, your big ones are going to be Helix, obviously. Balder is the Intamin prefabricated wooden coaster. Very compact. It actually forms a triple out and back layout. And if you've done rides like El Toro, you know that they are smooth because of the way that they built these. So Balder's very smooth. Not as crazy airtime, but I'm sure at some point I'll do a Balder review and go a little bit more in depth there. Valkyria is the new for 2018 roller coaster of the park. And unfortunately, I did not get a chance to do it. When we visited, it was in that period of time where track work was done, but testing had not started. The opening of the ride was delayed because of some issues that they had during construction. So originally, it looked like we would be able to ride it, but that ended up not being the case. But if anything, it gives me an excuse to go back one day. And while we're on the topic of roller coasters, I do want to quickly give a shout out to the staff, particularly to a guy named Pontus, who was very nice, gave us a tour around Liseberg and some backstage areas, gave us a nice opportunity to see some of the rides from a unique perspective, and he even allowed us to autograph Balder, which is a neat thing that they allow some enthusiasts and public figures to do as they go backstage and sign their name on the wood. So if you ever happen to get the chance to go back there, look for Taylor Bybee of Coaster Studios. I'm somewhere on that ride. So that's pretty cool. My name is forever indented onto a roller coaster. So in that way, I have to thank Lisa Berg because no other park has given me that opportunity. So I think that's very unique. I think that says a lot about the people there. Some of the unique things about this place, I mentioned how it's in that downtown area. And so naturally, as you can expect, when you're at that top over by Helix, you get some great views of the surrounding area, and they have several rides that will give you a really good view. They have a drop tower that actually used to be an observation tower. They converted it into a drop tower, and because it's on top of a hill, this thing just feels so tall. You get up to the top, and the view is spectacular. 
The park does have a massive Ferris wheel. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do it. That was one of the rides that when I walked away from Lisaburg, I was like, oh man, I wish I had a bit more time because that is something I would have liked to have been able to do. I can imagine the views would have been gorgeous. But the park in general is very pretty. I was surprised how green it was. There were a lot more trees than I think I was originally anticipating. And I think that's just Sweden as a country as a whole. Kulmarden was the same way. When you walk in through that main midway, it is very pretty. So many flowers. The landscaping team does a great job at Liseberg. They're nicely paved. It's a wide midway to accommodate crowds. And architecturally, I loved all the buildings. You can tell they spent some time designing all of this. And while I'm talking about how pretty it is, and a good example of this is they have a stream that runs through part of the park. There's even a boat docked on it. The theming is done very well as you go from area to area, but the roller coasters maybe don't have as good of a theming as some other attractions that other European parks do. Helix has a neat theme, but it's also not that great. The best thing about it actually is the soundtrack they play in the station, which is absolutely incredible. Shout out time score. So in that regard, theming is done well, but I would say mostly is just in the themed areas and even their kids area as well, themed and landscaped. The mascot here is the Leesburg Bunny. It's this green rabbit, pretty cute. Talking a bit about the food, I had two meals here and I had some different things. The first thing I had is I had some pasta and it was good, but I wouldn't say it was the best. In all honesty, it kind of tasted like it came out of a can, like it wasn't fresh. So like it was fine, it did the job. I think it could have been better. And my second meal I had was kind of the same type of feel. So I'd say the food is fine, it didn't, exceed my expectations or anything like some other European parks did. Maybe it's specifically what I chose to eat, but the food was not my favorite. On one hand though, they did have free refills, which was nice. If you watched my Colmarden review, you know that I mentioned they do the same thing. These two parks are some of the only ones in Europe that do that. And another thing I wanted to mention before I wrap this up, this park has a year round haunted house. And if you know me, I love a good scare. I'm a big fan of going to Halloween events. And so to walk through a haunted house in the middle of summer was totally awesome. I loved it. And it was very well done too. Very cool because it's multi-level. So you start at the top, work your way down to the bottom, and then that's where you exit. And there's scare actors there and everything. Very cool. Definitely recommend it. Don't miss out on that. But just to wrap up this review, if you get a chance to visit here, I recommend it. In terms of roller coasters, they don't have that many, but they have a very rounded collection of attractions as a whole. This is a full day park. If you really want to be able to do all of the main stuff, you'll want to spend some time here. This is also one of the rare parks in Europe that is open in the evening so you can get some night rides if you stay late enough. We did not do that, unfortunately, which made me sad because a night ride on Helix sounds amazing. But I will say this is one of those parks that I visited I would like to make it back to at some point. It's just such a cool place. So I absolutely recommend visiting Liesenberg in Gothenburg, Sweden. If you've been here, let me know down in the comments below what you thought. And stay tuned for more park reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you guys next time.